2006 Atlantic hurricane season. The 2006 Atlantic hurricane season was a fairly inactive Atlantic hurricane season compared to the 2005 season. It was also unusual that no hurricanes made landfall in the United States of America, something which had not happened since 2001. The season officially started on June 1st, 2006, and officially ended on November 30th, 2006, dates which by convention delimit the period of each year when the majority of tropical cyclones form in the Atlantic Basin. However, if a storm from the previous season persists into the next year, it can be considered part of both seasons, as Tropical Storm Zeta demonstrated. One system, Tropical Storm Zeta from the 2005 season, continued through early January, only the second time on record that had happened. Tropical Storm Alberto was responsible for two indirect deaths when it made landfall in Florida. Hurricane Ernesto caused heavy rainfall in Haiti and directly killed at least seven in Haiti and the United States. Four more hurricanes formed after Ernesto, including the strongest storms of the seasons, Hurricanes Helen and Gordon. No tropical cyclones formed during October for the first time since the 1994 season. Following the intense activity of 2005, forecasts predicted that the 2006 season would be very active, though not as active as 2005. However, a rapidly forming El Nino event in 2006, the presence of the Saharan air layer over the tropical Atlantic, and the steady presence of a robust secondary high-pressure area to the Azores High centered around Bermuda, all factors known to inhibit tropical cyclone activity, contributed to a slow season. There were no tropical cyclones after the 2nd of October. Table of Contents Section 1 Seasonal Forecasts Section 1.1 Pre-Season Forecasts Section 1.2 Mid-Season Outlooks Section 2 Storms Section 2.1 Tropical Storm Zeta 2005 Section 2.2 June and July Section 2.3 August <coughs> Section 2.4, September and October. Section 3, Impact. Section 4, Lack of Activity. Section 5, Accumulated Cyclone Energy, ACE, Rating. Section 6, Storm Names. Section 7, Season Impact. Section 8, See Also. Section 9, References. Section 10, External Links. An info box accompanies this article. This gives a summary of the main information about the 2006 Atlantic hurricane season to supplement the arrangement of information in this article. 2006 Atlantic hurricane season info box. There is an image that accompanies this info box that displays the roots of hurricanes on a map of the Atlantic Ocean. First storm formed on June 10th, 2006. Last storm dissipated October 2nd, 2006. Strongest storm, Helen and Gordon, measured at 955 millibars. 120 miles per hour, or 195 kilometers per hour. Total storms, 10. Hurricanes, 5. Major hurricanes, category 3 or greater, 2. Total fatalities, 7 direct, 7 indirect. Total damage, 500 million U.S. dollars 
at 2006. Section 1. Seasonal Forecasts Forecasts of hurricane activity are issued before each hurricane season by noted hurricane experts Philip J. Klotzbach, Dr. William M. Gray, and their associates at Colorado State University, and separately by NOAA forecasters. Klotzbach's team, formerly led by Gray, has defined the average number of storms per season, 1950 to 2000, as 9.6 tropical storms, 5.9 hurricanes, and 2.3 major hurricanes, storms exceeding Category 3 strength on the Saffir-Simpson hurricane scale. A normal season, as defined by NOAA, has 6 to 14 named storms, with 4 to 8 of those reaching hurricane strength, and 1 to 3 major hurricanes. Section 1.1 Preseason Forecasts On December 5, 2005, Klotzbach's team issued its initial extended range forecast for the 2006 season, predicting an above average of 17 named storms, nine of them hurricanes, and five classified as Category 3 intensity or higher. As in the 2005 season, the team predicted that it was highly probable that at least one major hurricane would directly impact the United States. The forecast suggested an 81% probability that at least one major hurricane would strike the U.S. mainland, a 64% chance of at least one major hurricane striking the east coast of the United States, including Florida and the peninsula, and a 47% chance of at least one major hurricane striking the Gulf Coast of the United States from the Florida panhandle westward. The team also predicted that the potential for major hurricane activity in the Caribbean was above average. A few months later, on April 4, 2006, CSU issued another forecast confirming its December predictions. On May 22, 2006, NOAA released its preseason forecast for the 2006 season. The prediction was for 13 to 16 named storms, 8 to 10 of those becoming hurricanes, and 4 to 6 becoming major hurricanes. On May 31, 2006, Klotzbach team released its final preseason forecast for 2006, confirming its earlier predictions. Section 1.2 Mid-Season Outlooks On August 3, 2006, Klotzbach's team lowered its season estimate to 15 named storms, with seven becoming hurricanes and three becoming major hurricanes, noting that the conditions had become less favorable for storms than they had been earlier in the year. The sea level pressure and trade wind strength in the tropical Atlantic were reported to be above normal while sea surface temperature anomalies were on a decreasing trend. On August 8, 2006, NOAA revised its season estimate to 12 to 15 named storms, with 7 to 9 becoming hurricanes and 3 to 4 becoming major hurricanes. The reduction was attributed to less favorable environmental conditions, a decrease in La Nina conditions, and the lack of a, quote, very persistent upper-level ridge pattern over the eastern U.S. and western Atlantic, end quote. On September 1st, Klotzbach team also revised its season estimate to 13 named storms, 5 hurricanes, and 2 major hurricanes, citing a larger volume of the Saharan air layer, and an El Nino trend in the Pacific, 
The team again reduced the number of tropical storms expected for the season a month later, on October 3rd, with an updated forecast of 11 named storms, 6 hurricanes, and 2 major hurricanes, citing the ongoing El Nino. There is an info box that accompanies this section of the article, entitled Predictions of Tropical Activity in the 2006 Season. Section 2. Storms. There is an image that accompanies this section of the article. It is a pictorial representation of the timeline of the 2006 Atlantic hurricane season, and names the storms of the 2006 Atlantic hurricane season. Section 2.1. Tropical Storm Zeta, 2005. Tropical Storm Zeta formed on December 30, 2005, and lasted until January 6, 2006. Although it mostly existed in 2006, it is officially a storm of the 2005 Atlantic hurricane season because it formed in 2005. Zeta joined Hurricane Alice as only the second Atlantic tropical cyclone in recorded history to span two calendar years. Section 2.2 June and July The official start of the Atlantic hurricane season is June 1st, which is just before Tropical Storm Alberto developed on June 10th in the northwestern Caribbean. It tracked northeastward through the Gulf of Mexico reaching an intensity of 70 miles per hour, 110 kilometers per hour, on June 13th, before making landfall near Adams Beach, Florida, on June 14th. Losing its tropical characteristics, Alberto moved northward and produced heavy rainfall in South Carolina and North Carolina. The remnants tracked off the east coast and transitioned into a powerful extratropical storm which affected Nova Scotia with high winds, heavy rain, and rough surf, leaving four fishermen missing offshore. Alberto caused record rainfall in North Carolina, peaking at 8 inches, 200 millimeters. In Florida, two people died, and damage estimated at 250,000 U.S. dollars was caused. On July 17th, a cold front moved off the northeast United States coast and stalled. The tail end of the front spawned a low-pressure system, which tracked to the northeast along the front. Convection increased for a short time before reaching colder waters and dissipating. Although the system was not believed to be tropical during its existence, Post-season analysis revealed that it had attained tropical characteristics for 30 hours, and so it was designated an unnamed tropical storm. A frontal system moved off the North Carolina coast and spawned a low-pressure system east of North Carolina on July 18th. Associated with deep convection, the storm organized sufficiently to be upgraded to Tropical Storm Barrel on July 19th. It tracked northeast and passed over Nantucket before dissipating on July 21st, having had no major effects on land. An image accompanies this section of the article with the caption, Tropical Storm Barrel, southeast of New York City. Section 2.3 August. By late July, a tropical wave moved off the coast of Africa and traversed the Atlantic Ocean. The associated convection organized and became a tropical depression on July 31st. The depression tracked westward and soon intensified into Tropical Storm Chris before reaching peak winds of 65 miles per hour, no 100 kilometers per hour just before weakening and passing over Cuba as a tropical depression. The storm's effects were limited to moderate rainfall in Hispaniola and Cuba. On August 20th, 
A tropical wave moved off the coast of Africa, associated with deep convection. The next day, it spawned a system which was classified as a tropical depression while situated south of the Cape Verde Islands. On August 22nd, the depression was upgraded to Tropical Storm Debbie. Debbie passed south of the Cape Verde Islands and reached peak intensity of 50 miles per hour, 85 kilometers per hour, before turning north and dissipating without affecting any land masses. Hurricane Ernesto originated from a tropical wave which moved off the coast of Africa on August 18th. The wave progressed westward and reached the western Atlantic, spawning a tropical depression on August 24th. On August 25th, the depression was upgraded to Tropical Storm Ernesto, and the storm was briefly upgraded to a hurricane, before striking Florida as a weak tropical storm. Ernesto moved off the U.S. east coast and made a second landfall on North Carolina, before moving inland and dissipating over Canada. Overall, the storm caused 500 million U.S. dollars in damage in the United States and killed at least 11 people, five of them in the United States and five in Haiti. An image accompanies this section of the article with the caption, Hurricane Ernesto Rainfall Map. Section 2.4, September and October. Hurricane Florence originated on September 3rd from the complex merging of two tropical waves, creating one large low-pressure area. The disturbance moved westward and became a tropical depression in the open waters of the Atlantic. On September 5th, it organized further and was upgraded into Tropical Storm Florence. Florence tracked west-northwest and intensified into a hurricane on September 10th, while south of Bermuda. The storm passed just to the east of Bermuda as a Category 1 hurricane on the Saffir Simpson. On the Saffir Simpson hurricane scale, as it reached peak intensity of 90 miles per hour, 145 kilometers per hour. It moved north before losing its tropical characteristics and passing over the Canadian Maritimes as a strong extratropical storm. Florence affected Bermuda with wind gusts up to 115 miles per hour, 185 kilometers per hour, and heavy rain, which left 2,000 and heavy rain, which left 23,000 houses without electricity. In all, the storm caused 200,000 U.S. dollars in damage. A tropical wave moved off the coast of Africa on September 1st. The wave tracked westward across the Atlantic for several days until it reached an area of relaxed wind shear and its associated low-pressure area organized into a tropical depression. It moved east-northeast and was upgraded to Tropical Storm Gordon on September 11th while located over the open waters of the Atlantic. Gordon turned north and became a hurricane on September 13th. It intensified to Category 3 status on the Saffir simpson hurricane scale and reached its peak intensity of 120 miles per hour, 195 kilometers per hour, on September 14th. Tracking northward, it began to lose tropical characteristics. On September 20th, the system affected Britain with high winds and heavy rain as an extratropical cyclone. During Gordon's passage through Britain, 120,000 homes were left without power after winds of 80 miles per hour, 130 kilometers per hour, affected the country. On September 11th, a vigorous tropical wave moved off the west coast of Africa. The wave organized rapidly and spawned a tropical depression to the south-southeast of Cape Verde Islands. On September 14th, the depression intensified into Tropical Storm Helen while tracking west-northwest. 
Helen continued to intensify and was upgraded to a hurricane on September 16th. The storm began to execute a northward track and reached Category 3 hurricane status on the Saffir-Simpson hurricane scale on September 18th before reaching its peak intensity of 120 miles per hour, 95 kilometers per hour. It started to weaken when it reached the cold waters of the North Atlantic, and Helen dissipated on September 20th, without having had major effects on land other than moderate wind gusts in the British Isles. Hurricane Isaac originated in a tropical wave that moved off the coast of Africa on September 18th. The wave trapped west, produced a tropical depression, and became a tropical storm on September 28th. Isaac moved north-northwest and was upgraded to a hurricane on September 30th. It turned north and reached its peak intensity of 85 miles per hour, 135 kilometers per hour, before weakening and brushing Nova Scotia. Isaac did not affect land or any shipping lanes. An image accompanies this section of the article with the caption Hurricane Gordon on the top, with Hurricane Helen to the southeast. Section 3. Impact An image accompanies this section of the article with the caption Flooding in North Carolina caused by Tropical Storm Alberto. Compared to the previous 2005 Atlantic hurricane season, 2006 was not severe in terms of deaths and damage. The season was unusual in that no hurricanes made landfall in the United States, the first such occurrence since 2001. However, three tropical storms made landfall in the United States. The first of them, Tropical Storm Alberto, made landfall in Florida with winds of 50 miles per hour, 80 kilometers per hour. The storm moved inland and produced 6 to 7 inches, 150 to 175 millimeters, of rain in the area of landfall and in North Carolina. A total of three indirect deaths resulted from the storm. Tropical Storm Barrel made landfall on Nantucket, causing little or no damage. It generated high waves along the east coast of the United States, with 19-foot, 6-meter seas in the open ocean. The third and more significant storm was Hurricane Ernesto, which killed two people in Virginia. Ernesto made landfall in the Florida Keys and later made landfall in Miami-Dade County. It moved north and dissipated over Virginia while causing severe flooding. In addition to the two fatalities, the flood left 500 million U.S. dollars in damages. During the season, only one tropical cyclone in the Atlantic Basin affected Mexico. Tropical Storm Alberto dropped r light amounts of rainfall across the country with a 24-hour total peaking at 4 inches, 100 millimeters, in Peto, Yucatan. Light rain was also reported throughout Quintana Roo in eastern Campeche. Canada was affected by several tropical cyclones during 2006. As Tropical Storm Alberto was becoming extratropical, its remnants spawned strong winds across the Canadian Maritimes, including gusts of 74 miles per hour, 119 kilometers per hour, in the Barrington district of Nova Scotia. It is reported that the passage of the storm left four sailors missing about 230 miles, 370 kilometers, south of Nova Scotia. As an unnamed tropical storm entered the sea of responsibility of the Canadian Hurricane Center, a buoy recorded sustained winds of 36 miles per hour, 56 kilometers per hour, with gusts of up to 44 miles per hour, 70 kilometers per hour. The remnants of Tropical Storm Barrel dropped moderate precipitation in Atlantic Canada, officially peaking at 2.8 inches, 
71 millimeters in Scotts Bay, Nova Scotia, with an unofficially higher total of 3.5 inches, 88 millimeters. In some locations, 1 inch, 25 millimeters, of rain fell in an hour. Moderate winds were reported along its path, which peaked at 60 miles per hour, 96 kilometers per hour, in southern Nova Scotia. As an extra tropical storm over Newfoundland, Hurricane Florence produced powerful winds peaking at 101 miles per hour, 163 kilometers per hour, and moderate amounts of rainfall of up to 2.6 inches, 67 millimeters. Additionally, Hurricane Isaac produced moderate winds on land in Newfoundland, peaking at 60 miles per hour, 96 kilometers per hour, with a sustained wind of 46 miles per hour, 74 kilometers per hour, was recorded. Hurricane Florence passed to the east of Bermuda as a Category 1 hurricane, producing wind gusts of up to 115 miles per hour, 185 kilometers per hour, which caused several power outages and minor damage. Florence then brought heavy rains across Newfoundland as an extratropical storm, destroying one house and causing minor damage to several others. There were no fatalities as a result of the hurricane. An image accompanies this section of the article with the caption, Rainfall Totals for Hurricane Florence in Metric Units. Parts of the United Kingdom were affected by Hurricane Gordon, which moved through the Atlantic, reaching Category 3 intensity on the Saffir-Simpson hurricane scale, before turning towards the North Atlantic. Winds of up to 80 miles per hour, 130 kilometers per hour, were reported in Britain, and after Gordon's passage, 120,000 homes were left without power. Section 4. Lack of Activity the National Hurricane Center's pre-season activity outlook predicted 13 to 16 named storms, 8 to 10 hurricanes, and 4 to 6 major hurricanes. They also predicted a high risk of at least one major hurricane strike to the southeast United States. In the event, only 9 storms formed during the season the lowest number since the 1997 season, when there were seven. Five of the nine storms developed into hurricanes, also the lowest number since 1997, and only two attained major hurricane status, tying with 2002 for the fewest since 1997. Only two named storms were observed during October, the lowest a number since 1994, when none were seen during that month. Additionally, only three named storms made landfall in the United States, the fewest since 2001. Because of several factors, including a rapidly forming El Nino event, Saharan air layer over the tropical Atlantic, and the presence of high-pressure area to the Azores High situated near Bermuda contributed to a below-average season. Also, sea surface temperatures in the western Atlantic were just at or slightly below average. In contrast, sea surface temperatures during the 2005 season were well above average. Section 5 Accumulated Cyclone Energy, ACE, Rating The table on the right shows the ACE for each storm in the season. ACE is, broadly speaking, a measure of the power of the hurricane, multiplied by the length of time it existed, so storms that last a long time, as well as particularly strong hurricanes, have high ACEs. ACE is only calculated for full advisories on tropical systems at or exceeding 35 knots, 39 miles per hour or 63 kilometers per hour, or tropical storm strength. The cumulative ACE for the 2006 season 
was towards the lower end of the official, quote, near normal, unquote, grading. The number of tropical storms and hurricanes was near the long-term average. Hurricane Helen had the highest rating of the season, with a total ACE of 24.3, and Hurricane Gordon came in second highest, having a total ACE of 22.2. The unnamed tropical storm had the lowest, totaling to 0.654. The season total ACE was 78.535. Section 6. Storm Names The names listed were used for named storms, formed in the North Atlantic during 2006. No names were retired, and so this list will be reused in the 2012 season. The list is the same as that used in the 2000 season, except for Kirk, which replaced Keith. No storm was given a previously unused name for the first time since the 1993 season. It was the first time since the 1997 season that no Atlantic names were retired. The World Meteorological Organization determined at its annual meeting in the spring of 2006 to again use names from the Greek alphabet, starting with Alpha, if the main list should become exhausted. 2006 Storm Names Alberto Beryl, Chris, Debbie, Ernesto, Florence, Gordon, Helen, Isaac. The following names were unused. Joyce, Kirk, Leslie, Michael, Nadine, Oscar, Patty, Raphael, Sandy, Tony, Valerie, William. Section 7. Season Impact. This section is composed of a chart describing the 2006 Atlantic hurricane season statistics. The chart gives statistics as to the storm name, active dates, storm category at peak intensity, maximum wind in miles per hour, minimum pressure in millibars, the ACE rating, landfalls as to where, when, and the wind speed at landfall, damage done in millions of U.S. dollars, and deaths associated with the storm. The table also gives season aggregates. Section 8. See also. List of Atlantic hurricanes. List of Atlantic hurricane seasons. List of tropical cyclone names. 2006 Pacific hurricane season. 2006 Pacific typhoon season. 2006 North Indian cyclone season. 2005-2006 Southern Hemisphere Tropical Cyclone Season 2006-2007 Southern Hemisphere Tropical Cyclone Season 2006-2007